I want to uh, introduce myself. I'm Jordan Kruger. I am uh, the Director of Research and Operations at Block, and I'm also a research fellow with the Chamber. Up next, we have a very special keynote address from Jonathan uh, Johnson, the Chairman of the Board of Overstock.com. Overstock is a thought leader uh, in the Bitcoin and blockchain industry. It was uh, the first public company to accept Bitcoin. Overstock is also one of the original founding members of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Jonathan Johnson is the president of Medici Ventures, Overstock's subsidiary uh, that oversees a portfolio of blockchain technology and fintech businesses, which include T0 and investments in Bit.com, Pier Nova, Factum, Settlement, and Identity Mind. In his role, Johnson is responsible for continuing Medici Ventures' efforts to pioneer growth and innovation in applying the blockchain to financial systems and beyond. Please help me in wel welcoming Jonathan Johnson to the stage. Thank you, Jordan. I got to tell you, it is great to be among fellow blockchainers. So many times, there we go. So, so many times I tell my mother-in-law or one of the soccer moms when we're watching our kids play what I do, and they just, they don't have any idea. So it's great to be with you. December 2013, the Overstock executive team makes a decision to begin accepting Bitcoin as a payment method. We thought it would take us 12 months, but we had a group of about 40 developers who volunteered and said, we can get this done quickly. So in that week after Christmas, they locked themselves in a conference room, asked for pizzas to be slid under the door, and on January 9th, we became the first billion dollar retailer to accept Bitcoin. That was awesome. Bitcoiners are loyal customers. Their average order size is bigger. They shop frequently. But we quickly learned that as cool as Bitcoin was, it was the underlying technology that was going to be revolutionary. Now, Overstock was a relatively early player in e-commerce. 1999 is when Overstock started. And we thought that the blockchain would transform the world like the internet had done. And so we began to think, how can we be more involved uh, in blockchain? And we thought, the blockchain is great for getting out of transactions all the trust intermediaries. There's so many transactions where if you and I don't know each other, we transact through trust intermediaries. That's friction, that's cost, that's slop, that creates fraud. And we saw Bitcoin as the chance to have technology provide the trust. Technology was there for the trust and we could get rid of intermediaries. For example, we began accepting Bitcoin we didn't need to go through the credit card companies, which is right there. We let go of a lot of uh, intermediaries. So we began looking for instances where we could be involved in uh, businesses that got rid of intermediaries. Uh, everyone knows decentralized. Here's the first one we got involved in. This is a very simplified explanation of what happens when I want to buy a share of stock from you. I go to my broker and I put in a buy order. You've been to your broker and you put in a sell order. When the bid hits the ask, our brokers through the DTCC transact. You and I don't know each other. We don't trust each We don't have any reason to trust or distrust each other, but all these trust intermediaries are in place. Well, this is a very simple schematic. There are actually dozens and scores of people involved in this transaction. And in order to settle a trade, 
the day that I pay for the share that you're selling, the trade doesn't settle until trade plus three days, or T plus three. In the United States, we're working really hard to catch up with the rest of the world to get to T plus two. And how are we doing that? We're deciding we're just going to run faster. There's no technology involved in getting from T3 to T2. Well, we knew that blockchain was the way to do this. So we purchased a broker-dealer, an ATS, and we got him on the blockchain. And just like Dr. Jonas Salk injected himself with the polio vaccine to prove that the vaccine worked, Overstock injected itself with the blockchain vaccine. First, we issued private debt on the blockchain. Then we issued public debt on the blockchain. And last December, we became the first publicly traded company to issue public equity on our T0 platform blockchain. T0, the trade is the settlement. There's no T plus 3, T plus 2. It tra the trade is the settlement. We now have a preferred share, OSTKP for preferred, that you can buy and trade on the blockchain. We think it's monumental. This is more than a proof of concept. This is the blockchain in action working. Now, I will tell you, to get this done required jumping over regulatory hurdles and through regulatory hoops. We decided to get SEC approval. We decided to get FINRA approval. We know a lot of blockchainers say, why go? to the regulators, do it as an anarchist would. But we said, if we're going to do this, let's do it according to Hoyle. Well, the regulators made it difficult. I will tell you they made it difficult. They said, this is a new technology. Instead of having a whole ecosystem of broker dealers, you must use one broker dealer. Well, we said, OK, we want to prove the concept. Here we go. That's the kind of problem that blockchain will face if we don't have organizations like the Chamber of Digital Commerce fighting for us in Washington. I don't know if you know Astro Teller. Astro Teller is a Google X. He's got the coolest title in the history of the world. His title is Captain of the Moonshot. He works at Google X and helps people fail faster as they try and do things so that they can succeed faster. He has an interesting graph that he puts up frequently. One axis of the graph is speed of technological revolution. The other axis is time. And as you can imagine, over time, there have been some revolution, and it gets a little steeper, and it curves up significantly. On that same graph, he has a much flatter line that slopes up slightly that is humans or society's ability to adapt to technological change. So when the car came, the ability to adapt to that change was above the technological revolution. Where does he put the dot today? Where are we today? Technology is outpacing humans or society's ability to change as quickly. I think a great example of that is regulators. You think that there is any government regulator who practices agile principles <laughs> in regulating? Try something if it fails, back off, fail, failure fast. Try something that might be a little bit out there. No, they are safe, they are slow. And the, I think the blockchain's biggest hurdle will be society's inability to keep up with it. And when I say society, I think the biggest anchor on that boat is regulation. Um, here's the timeline. We announced Medici Ventures in October. We issued our crypto bonds. We declared our prospectus effective at the SEC. We did our blockchain. So we thought it was a break the speed of sound moment. Now, is it a 
kind of jets you'd fly today? No, it's probably a lot closer to Chuck Yeager's plane that he broke the speed of sound, on, but it works. What is Medici Ventures doing? We are focusing, if you can say six areas is focus, I'm not sure it is, but we are focusing on bringing, on fostering and advancing blockchain technologies in six different areas. Money and banking, land titling, capital markets, identity, voting, and underlying technology. We think we bring something unique to the investing world. One, we get it. We get what blockchain is, and we get that it is the future. Two, we have a team of developers in Salt Lake that are blockchain experts. We parachute them in to help jumpstart companies that we invest in. They can be helpful. They see what they're doing at other companies. There's a lot of synergy there. Then we also get our portfolio companies together to see what network synergies there are among each other so that they can solve problems faster. To give you a sense, T0 is a capital markets company. It's helped us uh, break the speed of sound. Piranova is underlying technology. It is also involved in helping banks create consolidated audit trails of all their transactions. The blockchain will be a wonderful application to cut out compliance costs that kill banks. Bit is a fantastic company down in Barbados that is working with, Barba with Caribbean central banks to issue digital currency, so in large part with the goal of banking the unbanked. In the US, in the US about 7% of the population is unbanked and 30% are underbanked. They can deposit a paycheck, but they probably don't have a credit card or even a debit card. In the Caribbean and in much of the developing world, that number is 40%. 40% in the Caribbean are unbanked. Many more are underbanked. And yet cell phone penetration, smartphone penetration, is 140%. There are people without a bank account holstering two smartphones. Those people, when we digitize currency, when we make it so that whether it's fiat currency or cryptocurrency, and that becomes usable all over, their lives will change. How many of you have asked the cab driver in DC where he's from? The most frequent answer I get, Jim, Ethiopia. Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia. I always ask him, do you go back to Ethiopia? Yeah, once in a while. Do you send money back to Ethiopia? Always the answer is yes. If they don't have a bank account, and or their relative in Ethiopia doesn't have a bank account. How are they doing that? Western Union, 15 to 30%. That is a thick vig to take off the top. We think BIT and, other, and Ripio, doing it down in South America, can do these things. Settlements, settlements involved in voting applications. They've, they are building a proof of concept to use in the Saudi Arabian, Arabian Parliament right now. Big deal, voting application. Um, Factum is involved in land titling. I think they broke their pick on an effort in Honduras, but now they are focused here in the United States on putting all the contracts and documents that go into mortgage banking on the blockchain. Since 2008, when the market blew up, the amount of loans that are given out has remain has grown to about flat. But the cost of compliance is exponentially higher. The blockchain can strip those, co those compliance costs out. And then identity mind is involved in, uh, is involved in identity. We continue to look at other companies in this area. If you're looking for funding and you fit one of our categories, call collect. I'll have my address up at the end. Um, I love this slide and I like it for two reasons. Bitcoin is to blockchain, 
like email is to the internet. I think it's the first widespread application that's used, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. It is just the tip of the iceberg. I remember getting my first email on CompuServe on a computer a lot like that. By the way, anyone at the government still working on a computer just like that? <laughs> I remember and just wondering what it was. It has become the industry that I am in that I've helped overstock, that didn't exist when I was in school. The industry that I hope to retire in, I think is barely beginning to exist today. And that's blockchain. Uh, email. If you are interested in us helping you advance your blockchain technology, we're all in. Let me give one other quote I wanted to read. It, talks, it has to do with settlement. Alan Greenspan, 2008, the crash has happened. He's testifying in front of Congress about what caused the crash. There are additional regulatory changes. Think of that government mindset. If it's broke, make it more broke with regulation. There are additional regulatory changes that this breakdown of the central pillar of competitive markets requires in order to return to stability, particularly in the areas of fraud, settlement, and securitization. What is T0 focusing on? Settlement, securitization, and stopping fraud. Technology, not regulation, is what will bring us into the future. I'd love to answer any questions, or I know we're close to cocktail hour. I can get out of the way between you and the drinks. <laughs> yes, question. Tell me your name first. That's my name. I'm a law student. Say it again. My name is Mehdi. Mehdi. Thank you, Mehdi. Yes, absolutely. I think there's a great example from earlier this year. Recently, there's a big class action lawsuit against Dole because of dividends paid or a class action. Actually, it was a class action lawsuit. There was a judgment came in, and then they said, we're going to figure out who we have to pay it to. There's 36 million affected shareholders holding Dole stock. They send the notices out. Guess how many shareholders showed up saying, we want a piece of that 276 per share? 49 million. With an immutable ledger, with all the way back to province of when the stock was issued, that systemic risk goes away. The slop in the system that goes from seller to broker-dealer to DTC to broker to buyer, that slop creates chance for fraud and chance for risk. An immutable ledger that you can see from Adam and Eve to today works and solves that risk. I hope that answers your question. Jim. The, uh, I'm a big fan of blockchain, but one fear are the IP rights. Uh, a person claiming to be Satoshi Nogamoto has filed for many patents on blockchain technology. What will that do to the industry? Well. If that person claiming to be Satoshi is a troll, it'll be a problem. But I think that there have been ample other patents, mostly filed by folks like us, that intend to use them as a shield and not a sword. And we had the conversation earlier in the day about IP. I think people should be patenting and patenting as a shield. And I think we ought to be putting it in, putting our our technology into open source and being used, that will be the way to fight off trolls. We have a long history at Overstock of fighting trolls. And uh, we're a big spend and defend firm rather than a settle with the troll. That's negotiating with terrorists. That's, that's what I think blockchain companies are going to have to do. Yes, tell me your name. Okay, well, fair enough. 
And I sometimes I show this clip of 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 uh, Brian Gumble and Katie Couric on the Today Show circa 1994 talking about internet and what's this A with a circle around it. And it looks really weird because they talk about internet instead of the internet. I'm talking about distributed ledger technology, putting the article the in front of it. Uh, does it need to be? We are big fans of the Bitcoin blockchain, but we are blockchain agnostic. T0 uses Ethereum and it ties it down uh, to the Bitcoin blockchain, but distributed lever, ledger technology. Yes? Um, Remind me your name. Uh, Scott Dewicki with the Identity and Payments Association. Thanks, Scott. Uh, curious, I mean, you're talking about reaching the unbanked, reaching um, those who need it most. Uh, the barriers that are keeping them from uh, having technology reach them, de-risking, you know, losing bank accounts, et cetera. I'm curious about uh, how much do you think a, uh, a trust model that could, you know, create some kind of global trust infrastructure, um, not something that would necessarily be regulatory, but uh, an agreed upon, uh, you know, modus operandi for dealing with things like fraud, for dealing with things like identity, um, could help that type of problem. I think it helps a lot, and I think getting something that's b bigger in scope rather than 50 states plus all the different countries. I mean, part of the problem we face with BIT today is do we go to get a money license in every one of the 50 states? So something that solves that at a larger level so that companies that are trying to bank the unbanked and create ways for digital currency to become ubiquitous, I think helps a lot. Scott. I look forward to talking with you about over drinks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We're going to clap and have drinks before too long. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>